Hi everyone, this is Feeder Master Charles Galofre and I'd like to welcome you to this video on the Yuko Piano. So let me go ahead and show you what the mother position of the Yuko is. Uh, it basically starts off with white playing e4, e5, knight f3, knight c6, and three bishop to c4. Um, now black replies with bishop to c5, and after c3 we reach the Yuko Piano. The idea of the Yuko Piano is very old school. Uh, ba basically what we'd like to do is after knight to f6 white plays d4 pawn takes pawn takes and white's strategy is to have greater control over the center but uh, at the time that this opening was being developed the concept of controlling the center was very two-dimensional it was uh basically with pawns right pawns are the soul of chess control the center etc etc so the idea behind this is that these pawns have a crippling effect so the classical center cripples black's pieces and as a result it was thought that white would have a decisive advantage but eventually chess evolves and theory evolves and technique evolves and uh, there were many methods of defense that were found for black that give them a highly satisfactory position so in this position, bishop to b4 check is the, theoret the theoretical main move, but it's also important to show that after bishop to b6, uh, white shows his advantage after d5, knight c7, e5, knight e4, castles, castles, queen e2, knight c5, b4. This is a game between Hervé and some amateur, knight to a6 d6 pawn takes pawn takes knight g6 bishop g5 we don't want to trade queens so we play bishop e7 and how did this game continue knight takes b4 knight c3 uh black is basically capturing what he can at the moment because obviously he's smothered in this position uh so knight takes b4 knight c3 what was played king h8 rook a1 Knight takes, was it knight takes e7? Um, no, not knight takes e7. Knight c6, bishop f8. Queen takes e2. Rook takes e2. Knight takes rookie 8 and white uh, shortly thereafter resigned basically after king f8 knight d8 there's no way of stopping knight t7 in a satisfactory fashion and uh, the game ends uh, rather quickly so going back a couple moves let's go back after d4 so we have the classical center now we're going to see how black plays versus the classical center bishop b4 check and uh, the main move here is bishop to d2 knight c3 is a molar attack and we'll cover that uh, in another video so bishop d2 and now the most common response is bishop takes but it should be mentioned that knight takes e4 this is a, a hyper modern way of of dealing with the center notice that this is a completely viable alternative for black uh, play now continues bishop takes knight takes bishop takes f7 king takes queen b3 d5 knight e5 check king e6 and after queen takes b4 c5 and this leads to an unclear position where uh the theoretical assessment hasn't been resolved yet and as a result this is a playable player some players with the black pieces like it because it's adventurous they have the king out exposed but uh you know other players don't like it because the king is basically in the middle of the board and that could lead to tactical possibilities for white so with that said um going back that's a, a good example of seeing how uh, white loses his pawn center here. But uh, needless to say, it's a perfectly playable position for white. I mean, he has chances there. The king is in the center of the board. So going back, after bishop d2, the most typical response here is bishop takes, knight takes, and d5. Immediately breaking this classical center, white's uh, pride and joy of the position, knight takes d5. And here, the main alternative is queen to b3. Uh, there have been other tries, for instance, castles, which is what Roman Junji has really recently recommends. And if black castles, there was a famous game between an amateur with the white pieces versus Jose Raul Capablanca. Uh, I believe he was the, I can't remember 
what world champion he was, what number. But anyway, uh, the amateur played knight to e5, Capablanca captured on b3, and then the amateur surprised Capablanca with knight to b3. Knight takes b3, bishop takes d5, knight takes rook, and after bishop takes f7, Capo was in trouble, king h8. He can't capture the rook because the queen on d8 hangs. He can't capture the bishop. Queen h5, and here black is just, I mean, black is getting getting crushed here. Bishop f5, queen takes, queen f6, knight g6 check, queen takes g6, bishop takes, rook takes, bishop takes rook, and after g6, bishop e4, Capolanca uh, eventually resigns. So let's go back a couple of moves. Um, after knight takes d5, the most common move here is queen to b3, and there are two ways for black to play here. He could play knight c to e7, or he could play knight to a5. If knight to a5, queen a4 check, knight c6, queen b3 leads to a draw. Uh, there are some alternatives for white that he could play to win the position, but we're not going to cover them here. And uh, the other variation is knight cd7, which is uh, which is the standard way of playing this position. Black is playing to blockade the isolated weak pawn, the isolated weak pawn, the isolated pawn. On d4, it's not necessarily weak. Uh, basically, what white has in exchange for this weakness is activity for his pieces. He has four pieces developed right now. So let's go ahead and point those out. He has four pieces developed, and he's going to have uh, an open c file and an open e file for his rooks. So, with that said, after knight c7, play typically continues castles. Castles. And uh, the game will continue along the lines of rook to e1. Rook to c1, knight to e5, and so on and so forth.